and welcome to episode 34 of My Doll's House Diary. Now in today's episode we're going to be back up in the attic area but this time we're going to be moving along to the storage attic and I'm going to start by telling you how I actually decorated the room and how I added the panelling to the roof as quite a few of you have asked how I did that and then I'm actually going to make a start on dressing the room. So let's get started. So quite a few people have asked how I actually created the old attic. So I thought I'd just start by telling you how I did it. And really it's very similar to how I constructed the other room. So I started with the chimney breast, which is cut from a piece of MDF. And it was an old shelf unit that we were getting rid of. So I just cut it to shape and shaped it around the sort of angle of the roof there. And then I cut out a little hole for the um, sort of fireplace area. And then I've used an embossed brick paper to cover the walls. And I've also aged the paper by adding some charcoal. So I just used an old charcoal pencil, sort of crushed it up onto a bit of paper and then applied that to the walls using cotton wool. So that the door didn't look quite so fresh and glossy. I applied the paint on the surround and the varnish on the door in the same way as I did the other rooms, but then I sanded it back. So if I get in a little bit closer, you can see that there's some of the natural wood showing through on the surround and actually on the door. I've done the same with the little light switch there, just sanded that back to reveal some of the natural wood. And I laid the flooring the same way as I did for the attic craft room, which was the latest um, My Doll's House Diary episode. I applied varnish, and that's varnish rather than wood dye, which I actually used to use um, before I discovered wood dye. But wood dye is a lot easier to apply. It dries quicker, it's easier to clean your brushes. So I do actually prefer wood dye to varnish. But like I say, for this I did use varnish and once it had completely dried, I sanded the floor back quite harshly. So as you can see, some of the strips are almost back to sort of natural wood there. And then I have said before, when I have the roof open, I'll dust out the other room. So I dust out the sort of entrance hall and the, the craft room but I actually let the dust just settle in here and I really like the look of that. But if you don't like the idea of that, you can use talcum powder to create dust. And then for the, the roof in here, again, I used the strip wood flooring strips. So I separated them from the initial sheet, created a template, and I actually just laid the strips across so they're all the same length. There might be a little bit of staggering where I ran out of sort of longer strips, but the intention was that they looked even and all the same length. Let me move in a little bit. And then I just used a three by three strip or one eighth of an inch, again applied the varnish and then just stuck them along as you can see there. So that they can reach right down to the ground, I just angled off the bottom, just using my craft knife, and I've angled them at the top as well. And that's just so that the roof can close. I've just left a little um, bulb there, as you can see, just to look like a light bulb. And I also continued that same technique onto the roof area and into the little window recess there. But when you're sort of doing a roof that clothes, closes down, just have a think about where you're placing them. So again, I had to angle the ones actually on the join there. So I'm just pulling the roof down to show you how it closes. That was the um, battery cover off the back of my light. <laughs> um, and then if you have a look along here, I had to cut away some of the strips and I actually had to do that whilst it was in situ because I didn't think about where it actually lays down on to the edge of the roof. So I actually had to cut those away and then that's the card you can see underneath. And then I just added some watercolour paint to that to colour it back up to match the roof. 
so there wasn't like just a big glaring strip of cardboard down there. So have a think about that when your roof shuts and I had to do the same at the other side as well and just a thinner strip down there so that it would lay across this part of the roof. And one thing I wish now that I had done, which I still might actually do, is add in some sort of 12th scale newspapers or magazines and just sort of tuck them between the strips there just to make it look like the roof has been patched up in areas and just to add a little bit more interest. And then what I actually did was add some sort of greeny, grey, really sort of gucky coloured watercolour paints to each of the strips just to make them look a little bit weathered and mouldy. And that sort of little patch that you can see in there, sort of in the centre of the camera now, was a sort of defect in, in one of the wood strips. Part of the strip had sort of come away, so I used it anyway. And I wish I'd have sort of included more pieces like that, really. I should have bashed them up a bit before I attached them to the sheet. But I am really pleased with how this room looks. And I think if you have got an attic space in your doll's house, it's really nice to have an old, dusty storage space. Because there's just so much you can do with it. And one of the other things that it's really useful for is things that you perhaps don't want to get rid of but you don't want to use in the main house or it could be something that you've made but you haven't made quite a good as job of it as you wanted to and that can also just be put up in the attic and I've got quite a few bits to go back in here let me just lodge that light down there I, I took out these few bits that you've probably seen standing in here I love these old tea chests and you'll find these in lots of old attics. These were sort of used originally by removal firms and things and also as packaging cases. So you'll see them with all sort of different um, writing on them and logos and things like that. And I did make a Christmas one here. I'm not sure I'm going to have that back in the attic. I might sort of keep that as a little display piece, but I'm certainly going to have that one in there. And then just these really simple little um, bin liners that I filled with um, a bit of foam or something, just to make them look like they're sort of filled with bits. So I'm going to have those in there. And I think I said in the last episode, when I started redoing the doll's house, I boxed up everything that was in the attic and I've got it in a box in my craft room, so I'd like to show you what's in there and then choose a few of my favourite pieces to come back in here and we'll create a little display. And then as we go along with the actual furnishing the doll's house, we can add to that and do some um, like separate little projects for the attic as well. So let's go and have a look now inside that box. OK, so here's the rather battered old box of bits that I took out of the doll's house and not actually just from the attic but from the whole house just things that I didn't want in there anymore but that I don't want to get rid of and these are actually some rugs that I made many many years ago using the techniques from the um, Sue Heezer I'm pretty sure that's her name book of rug making and it's a really lovely book loads of lovely designs in it and if you can get hold of it then do get hold of a copy I don't think it's in print anymore but you do occasionally see them on Amazon and places like that so these are some of those that I made that was for the red bedroom and then some runners for the um, hallways and this was one I designed myself which I was going to use in the study they've gone sort of rather out of shape even though I did starch them at the time I'm not sure if that's sort of a, an ageing thing, that they do tend to go out of shape. But I will be making all new rugs for the doll's house. A couple of people have actually asked if I'll be having rugs, and I will. And I'll be using this technique again, but I will probably use a finer um, canvas, because I, I think these can tend to look a little bit thick and out of scale. That was actually one of my own designs as well that I made for the blue bedroom and I want to have a go at making my own loom and doing some rugs on a loom. I've also seen 
um, people that have made knitted rugs just using one ply wool and some thin knitting needles and I really like the look of those they look like quite modern so I'd like to have a go at that and this was one that I made for the living room and I sort of copied a section of the wallpaper that was originally in there for the design but I actually like these as sort of um, artworks in their own right really so I could frame these and have them on the wall in my craft room rather than sort of getting rid of them because they did involve quite a few hours of work. So I've got the little um, dressing table mirror that was originally in the blue bedroom there. The little drawer doesn't open anymore. That's quite nice that could be sitting in the attic and frames are always really good for using in an attic Maybe if you've got some frames in your collection and you don't actually want to use them in the house or just haven't got any more pictures to go in them. Just loose frames just propped up against a wall always look really nice. I've got another one down there as well. I'll get to that in a moment. A picture that I originally had in the blue bedroom. Just something I found on Google and printed off and added a frame to. So that might look quite nice standing in there. And another frame that I made that used to have a mirror in it. That was in the um, black and gold living room originally. I've got here the little doll's house. And this was one that I made for my book, making miniatures in one twelfth scale, based on the look of a little sort of triang house. And I definitely want to have that back in my attic. Let's pop that over there. Another um, tea chest, which I've already talked about. And they're really good to make, fun to make as well. And I've got the, you'll find the tutorial here on the YouTube channel. I'll perhaps link to that one at the end. And then also some chairs. And I think as well chairs always look really good in an attic. And I know I've got another one in here somewhere. Actually stuck to a light fitting. Ooh. That's the trouble with storing things away. And you can sort of have them stood like that. And I purposely sort of made these all old and worn. I sanded away the leather seat there to make it look really old and worn and the wood as well. And here is another of the Reuter porcelain beds and I bought this at the same time as I bought the double bed that I'm using in my um, main bedroom in there. And I really like these, but I thought that might even look nice if we aged it up a bit and we could have boxes and things standing on it. Sort of tuck that at the back of the attic. As I, I won't be using a single bed in the doll's house. And I really do like that design. And then here are a couple of um, headboards, wooden headboards that I made in particular to stand against the side wall in the attic and this is using the design I think in one of my books I think in um, step by step but I've made the legs longer so that I could put a little post top on and I just made them a lot narrower just like I say particularly to fit that particular space and have them sort of stood like that so that's an idea if you want to sort of cover a piece of wall that's a good idea. I've got my stairs in here just really because I didn't know what to do with them. Leave those in there. Here I've got a radiator which I'm sort of holding on to to use in the bathroom. I really love these resin sort of radiators and there's some lovely shapes on there but I will sort of paint that up, paint that cream, maybe add a little bit of rust around the taps there. But I'm holding on to that for that. And then a few more of those frames. And these are actually the Mini Mundus frames. So they are actually metal and very heavy. So I might, I might have need to use these in the actual house. So they're really actually quite nice, the detail on those. Those ones I actually painted white. And I just used um, an emulsion paint actually over the, the gold um brass or whatever it is they're actually made of and then you can just sort of rub it back a little bit with a bit of wire wool 
to create a little bit of ageing on there. So I might use those in the house. Um, I've got my first ever furniture make here, which was this um, wardrobe based on a Laura Ashley design. <laughs> and when I look back at it, I think that's not bad for a first a first go, and probably quite adventurous as well. I even lined the drawers using the wallpaper that was originally in um, the blue bedroom and I think I've spoken about that before. I love having sort of little hidden details that only you know about. So I won't have that in the attic because it's quite large and you have to have it stood quite far forward because of the sloping roof but that's probably something I'll always keep hold of just as my first make and not only that but the thing that got me into making furniture simply because I was looking for a wardrobe with a flat top so that I could have some suitcases standing on top of it. And when I started um, in the doll's house hobby, sort of, what is it, 22 years ago now, um, it was all very much Victorian. That was the sort of main style. And there weren't many places online where you could order from. Makes me feel old saying that, but that's that's really how I started. So I thought, well, I'm going to have to make one of my own because I really wanted a wardrobe and have like some suitcases stacked on top, which I still do want to do um, in this doll's house. And then I've got these um, lovely old trunks and these as well are in my book, Making Doll's House Miniatures in 1 12th Scale. And I'm pretty sure we used to have something like this when I was a kid. I don't know if it was an actual trunk or something like a tea chest, but I just remember these black trunks with leather binding and little studs in them. I hope I'm saying the right thing. I'm pretty sure it was <laughs> when I was a child up in the attic. But I think we'll definitely have those up there as well really like those and I've got some kitchen towel tucked in there because what you can actually do is just have those open and do a little display in there have lots of things books and toys and everything in those so maybe that's something we'll do as well um, and then another rug that I made for the bedroom but again it went a little bit skew with and it wasn't laying properly in the room so I've just simply rolled it up and then tied it with string and they look really good just sort of tucked away in the corner of the attic so we'll pop that back in as well and then just some other bits a little chair that I was going to dress so I stuck a newspaper on there and then tried to remove it and then this little chair which I'm really annoyed because the legs have actually broken off but what I might actually do is fix the leg back on I'm pretty sure it's in here yes there it is I'll fix that leg back on and I can have that stand in in the attic just as a little you know old unused chair that's a shame that was one that I made from a kit and then I made the other one for my um, doll's house guest bedroom you might have seen that video but they're lovely little chairs and again I aged all of that so it looks like an old chair so we'll have that back in there somewhere as well and then I've just got all of the electric fires out of the doll's house in there all looking a little bit dusty and worse for wear but I really like those a couple of different designs there I'm not sure if I will be putting any of those back in I might do so I'll keep hold of them anyway um, and then some some light fittings as well for the entrance hall and I quite like those so I might reuse those and then that little pink one which actually you know might look quite nice in the the teal green guest bedroom because I've got some pink details in there should we go and have a look yeah so I've got like the little pink makeup bag on there and pink perfume bottles and tissue box dispenser so it would go and green and pink are a nice really nice color combination and that's quite a pretty little light fitting actually that does look really pretty doesn't it with the pink on the dressing table and then if i maybe have some pink accessories as well over on the bedside cabinets just to really sort of pull that color into the rest of the room and over here as well maybe something on the mantelpiece or on the 
top of the dresser and I've actually in my box of miniatures got a little cranberry jug and the handle's broken off so I need to fix it but that would look really nice in here as well and I'm not not generally a pink sort of person but I think just little bits of pink especially like I say with this teal green do look really nice so I'm going to leave that in there and in an upcoming episode we'll fit that back in and then add some splashes of pink around the room well, I'm glad I found that so just a couple of little Christmas books there and a little Christmas stocking that might have been left over from my Christmas tea chest that I made and some sort of the fire bulbs and everything, the little red bulbs there and that other set of stairs and another one of those lovely tulip lampshades and I'm going to be doing the main bedroom in cream creams and beiges so that could work in there and as lights are you know as you know quite expensive I would like to reuse these if I can so I think we'll probably pop that one back in there I don't really like these okay so that's that's really all that's in that box I did think there was a little bit more but what we'll do now is we'll take some of those bits that I spoke about back um, over to the attic and we'll do a little bit of a display and it isn't necessarily how I'm going to sort of keep it for all time but I just want to get a few bits back in to give me an idea of what else I'm going to need in there so I'm going to start with the bed just because it's sort of one of the bigger items and again just because of the height it doesn't go all the way back I think so I'll probably have that sort of pop that about there and then where was that little rug I'm going to tuck that behind it as well and sort of go into that far corner and that fills out that space under there then and then I'll tuck one of those crates around there like that and then to create a little bit of height, I think I'll put one on the bed as well. Actually, that one's a bit more detailed, so I'll put that one on the bed. And I'm going to tuck that one around there. And then we can have maybe back on there as well. And we'll stick one down there just to fill out that bit of space and then what have I got here those two crates again we could have one maybe back like that and I'm putting it at a bit of an angle and then what I'll do is I can have that one on top I'm going to pull it forward a bit because then what I'll do is do a little display in there and that one can go open then on top. I always sort of try and angle things rather than just dressing towards that sort of fourth wall that we spoke about before which is sort of the area that people are looking in from. You know face things in, in other directions it just makes things look a little bit more interesting and think about your own home where you wouldn't really put everything facing one particular wall you have things angled you know in all different directions. I've then got the little doll's house there, which I could have standing there like that. And we've got the two chairs. I can maybe have those over near the fireplace there. And I'll pop one upside down on top like that so see how from the front we've got all of these things at different angles which makes makes it look a little bit more interesting and then those little um, 
head and footboards I was talking about, I actually made to go over here on this wall, just to sort of fill a little area there. So I'll have those stood there as well. Where did I put the other one? It's right in front of me. I'm looking for it and it's right there. And have that one that sort of slight angle to it. And I may even add a coat of paint to those, just to add a little bit more colour over in that corner. And then the other things I had were the, the large frame and the picture. So we could maybe have those stood at this side wall. And again, when you've got a slope, always think about if you're sort of overhanging the slope it doesn't matter when you're just sort of standing and displaying things because obviously you can move them but before you glue anything down or you know use your tacky wax always just have a think and then that could go there like that angled over it it's so much fun displaying isn't it just having a play around and seeing where things look good. And like I say, this won't necessarily be permanent. But there is so much I can do even with how it looks now. So I can do a little display in there. We'll get some old books and games and um, like an old teddy bear or something in there. And then these chests I sort of want to pile up with um, crockery. And that's another really good thing as well. If you find that you accidentally break something, then don't throw it away. You know, if you can't do a really good mending job on it, then do just keep hold of it and you can put it in your crates. And I've certainly got a couple of chipped miniatures that aren't it really expensive enough to, to worry about sort of mending, but that would look really good as like old chipped ornaments to go in there. And I've got a lot of bed space here that I can cover and I want to make some cardboard boxes and I definitely want some suitcases to go in here and we can pile those up as well but we've got lots of space as well so in an attic there would be things everywhere and you would just have you know a little pathway coming through from your door and that's sort of one of my bugbears really I don't like to see things behind doors in dolls houses so that you wouldn't actually be able to open the door and get into the room so we'll leave the door area clear I can't close it now I've opened it um, I'll sand that side off a little bit but we will have things all the way along here as high up as we can before the sort of slant of the roof so that we've just got that little pathway going through the attic and then we've got real sort of, you know, layered effect in here. So we've got things at the front and people would have to sort of stand on tiptoe to, well, actually climb on a ladder. <laughs> but you know what I mean, to have to actually peer into the room. We've got more space back there. And I've got that um, chair with the broken leg that I need to fix. So that could maybe go back there and then we would be able to stand things on it. So that's why I think it's really fun to have a messy old attic so a really good way of using pieces that you don't want in the main house or displaying pieces that you've made but you're perhaps not 100% happy with and also a really good way of using broken miniatures and they look really good as well so that's it for today. I really hope you've enjoyed this slightly shorter episode and that you've picked up a few tips for your own doll's house attic if you have an attic area. If you do, let me know in the comments below whether you've turned yours into a dusty old storage attic or whether you've perhaps converted it into a bedroom or living area and I look forward to reading your comments. So I'll be back soon with another tutorial. In the meantime, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.